Um, I welcome you being the Zoom master for, for tonight. Uh, my name is Günther and uh, it's my pleasure to, to do, do some organization or and, 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 and be, be the technical the technical ghost of the machine tonight. And uh, <clears throat> I'm also the a supporter of the Vienna Toastmasters network and uh, together with Andreas Bruckmüller we are very very happy to contribute in in the founding procedure of this new club in in Bosnia and uh, we welcome Kemal and of course Selma uh, she, she's she's going to be the first president of this new club and uh, I want to hand over the the voice to Selma to give a short introduction. Thank you, Gunther. Speaking of president, when I heard that Joe Biden had Kamala as a vice president, I knew that I need Kemal, at <laughs> least, to be the vice president for the new club in Sarajevo. Thank you very much for your support and thank you for participating in this uh, workshop tonight. We appreciate definitely a lot, um, everything you've done so far, especially Günther and Andreas, and we wish you a good time and that this workshop is going to, to benefit you in a lot of ways. Thank you. Well, thank you very much to both. Um, thank you very much to both uh, dear Selma and Günther. Selma's smile always makes my day to be very honest with you guys. She, you know, she's just, you know, radiating with her energy. So um, anyways, um, good evening from Sarajevo. Um, I hope you guys are fine, healthy, and well. Um, since uh, you guys uh, told me that there's a meeting coming up after this, um, it won't take long, a maximum up to three, four hours. And <laughs> um, uh, just a bit of a joke at the start. So basically, um, I'm very grateful. Um, I'm very excited about the new Toastmasters program and project happening in the Balkans and the Bosnia. And um, I'm very grateful to be part of this team. Um, thank you very much. Um, just a quick interesting story. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when there was a, a talk about me giving a speech um, and giving a, a quick workshop on sales and sales pitching and everything else, uh, there, there was a poster coming up uh, of one of my talks at the IFTDO conference last year. It's the International Federal Training and Development Organization, a World HR conference. And I was giving a speech and there's a very interesting story behind it. Basically, they took a picture of me and my hand was in a Band-Aid. Um, and I told them, you know, get this picture off. There's much better pictures of myself. And they're like, it's very interesting, you know, it's talking about killer sales and, uh, you know, the, the killer sales pitch. Um, but the, the, the story about that conference and why I had a band-aid was that just the evening before my speech, um, I had a very bad accident. It was uh, two in the morning. They took me up to a, uh, a hospital. They stitched my hand. Basically, I have four stitches at this point. And um, in the morning, when I was supposed to give a speech with around three, 33 speakers and um, uh, I was you know very excited and I you know popped a bunch of pills um, I gave a speech and you know I'm very grateful that it ended up, ended up very well although I had no idea and remembrance of the conference itself uh, thankfully they recorded but I was on drugs the entire evening so um, a very interesting <laughs> very interesting story but you know when you're speaking uh, you, you can never say okay there's a reason for me not to attend something so the number one Thing about sales is also always be there, always show up. All right. So um, this is the number one thing we're going to talk about. Basically, um, sales is um, a very exciting, a very interesting thing that 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 is um, since the beginning of time. And there's always um, a question mark about what are we going to do and how we're going to sell. A lot of people ask me about and say, Kemal, you know, you're so, you, you're so, um, you're full of energy and everywhere you pop up, you, you start selling things and it's part of who you are. Well, the thing is, and the real story is I'm very, uh, I was a very, sh very shy kid when I, when I was little and um, um, I used to, you know, my dad, um, he's not with us anymore. He used to send me to these events where I, you know, used to talk in front of hundreds of people and I was very shy. My legs used to um, shake and everything else and it was you know it was one of the first things 
where I went to selling and you know um, uh, my belief is and everywhere I go is um, that selling is um, just an ability to skill that you need to learn um, sales pitch and delivering a sales pitch is a very high technical and uh, awareness ability that we need to develop um, how you know um, how we train and how we go on in our life so who am I basically um, uh, 10 years ago uh, I started I started learning about sales motivation and marketing I published two books called one is called um, uh, you know uh, well <laughs> born for success from applauder to applause the other one is called 50 shades of sales I also wrote a workbook called the sales credo um, that I just published a couple of weeks back and it's usually um, an added value to our trainings and sales um, I did conferences and seminars all around the world um, uh, and you know at, at least during these exciting times where unfortunate COVID-19 situation is happening uh, we do it and this is such an exciting time and look at look at this uh, currently I'm, I'm doing a, I'm, I'm doing a, a workshop with uh, two Vienna Toastmasters clubs and it's really a pleasure uh, with all these zoom and G meets and uh, Microsoft technology so anyways I'm very grateful and um, apart from that uh, I hold and I'm an owner I'm an entrepreneur I have my own agency called after marketing solutions we're headed in um, London UK we also have an office in Sarajevo and we also work in the US. Um, and apart from that, of course, my biggest title is I'm a father of two beautiful uh, princesses, uh, Nadia and Nala. I uh, love them with all my heart. Uh, hopefully they're not, they'll, they not grow up like their dad, um, but you know, they're, they're much better than me, hopefully. So anyways, um, this is my biggest achievement. Whenever we start talking about sales as, um, you know, it, it, people get, get stuffed up. The people think it's a very, um, you know, bad experience. It's something that is um, uh, not right, you know. You know, you get this point of view where you have this guy in a suit and selling you and trying to push you to buy something. And I believe it's not. And, you know, the good thing about salespeople is, and I always tell them, is that everybody hates them. You know, this is the number one thing about salespeople. And I'm, I'm a salesperson myself. I, since I, you know, since the first day, um, uh, I love selling. It's one of my biggest joys. I love doing, you know, sales. I love training sales. Um, but, you know, nobody likes us. You know, nobody said, you know, when somebody calls, hey, uh, this is from, you know, Teleshop. Do you want to buy a shoe? And somebody's saying, oh, I was, I'm so glad to hear from you. Please give me one. You know, please give me a call. How much are you selling? I want to buy. Nobody does that. The first thing they do is, oh, God, no, please. Okay, I'm, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. So they hang up the phone. And this is something that's joyful. You know, so the biggest thing in life is finding joy in what you do. And um, I, I believe that in order to be a good salesperson and in order to be a good person at all, you have to be aware of the moment. Um, uh, the biggest the biggest issue in, in most people that I train and most participants in my workshop is they, they anticipate and they, they want to achieve something. They're not living in the now. So basically, the first thing I want to talk about is the power of now. We have to understand that whatever we do, whoever we are, we are in the now and we have to be aware of it. Now, sales is also not something that, okay, at two o'clock, I'm going to uh, give a phone call to Gunther or Selma and I'm going to try to sell them something. No, it, it doesn't go that way. Sales is what we do in every single point of life. I mean, uh, if I would ask you now, how many people in this room currently, um, Zoom room, um, have Facebook, Instagram, social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever, um, you know, kids use these days, people will probably say, hey, we do. Um, so whenever they publish a photo, what happens is they publish a very good photo, then they put one filter on, second filter on. If they don't get enough likes, they delete it, they publish it again. What's going on is that people, uh, they, they, they want to show up the best as they can, which is normal. You know, this morning I woke up, um, I took, you know, I, I looked in the mirror, I said, okay, I want to I wanna look good today because I have a Toastmasters a workshop. And then my wife, she told me, you know, God bless her. She told me, you look terrible. Please do this, wear this. 
and um, you know that's how I, I that, that's how my day starts. Um, so basically, we want to look good and we want to behave and we want to do selling wherever we walk and whatever we do, and we want to live in the moment. So the number one thing is when uh, sales. Uh, when we're talking about sales and sales pitching, the number one thing we have to remember is that sales is part of life and we're constantly selling. And there's just one thing I want to say, opportunities, they don't happen. You know, we create opportunities. And this is one of the most important things about selling. Uh, if we're going to wait for opportunities, if we're not going to knock on the door, pick up the phone, send an email, nothing's going to happen. You know, imagine sitting in a restaurant and, you know, you're looking at a beautiful lady just across the restaurant and you want to, uh, you want to reach out to her. You want to tell her hi or how are you? And uh, if you don't do that, she'll never recognize you. She never, she, you know, you can never actually date her. So this is the number one thing about sales. You've got to grab the opportunity by living in the now. So um, it's not something that, you know, it's not something that is very structured when you say, okay, um, it's a very strict technique that you're gonna, that you're gonna have to learn and it's very, you know, in time frames and everything else, that's called a sales process. I'm talking about sales pitching now at this point. So when we talk about sales pitch, we have to understand that whatever we do, whatever step we make, um, we're selling, we're selling something. And, you know, um, there's a very, I want to just uh, mention two very quick stories about uh, the power of now and the importance of the now. So imagine, imagine this, you have two salespeople, okay? Um, they're coming to a, you know, far distant land somewhere um, and they want to sell watches, okay? So one of them, one of them uh, get, goes to this distant land and says, um, nobody's using watch at all. Nobody uses watches. Everybody looks at the sun, they're using some old kind of techniques and they go back to their headquarters in the company and they say, um, one of them says, um, I, I don't think this is a good market for us. And they say, why? Why isn't it a good market? Well, I don't believe it's a good market because nobody uses watches. So, okay, let's look at the other guy. The other guy goes there and says, wow, this is amazing. Nobody's using watches at all. We can, you know, we can literally create a monopole here. We need to create a company here and we need to sell watches to everybody because there's a huge, huge market behind watches. <coughs> Pardon me. So the biggest thing about sales is being positive. Having the ability to sell is also living in the now and understanding that you have to believe that you can sell anything you want. So this is the number one thing, mindset. Everything in life starts with here. It doesn't start with the product. Anybody can say, okay, this cup of glass is, you know, you, you, can, you can fill water in it or coffee or whatever you want to drink. But they sell the, 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 the passion. They sell the life. They, you know, we're talking about what is behind the first step. So behind the first step about, about selling is about is, is having positive attitude and positive energy. So, you know, when it comes to this story about the watch seller, I'll just say that one guy got fired and the other guy got promoted, maybe even became the head, you know, the, the president general of the headquarters. But anyways, um, the other story I want to tell you about positive energy, and I love it. I read it um, seven years ago in a book by Anand Pai. And um, he's talking about two people on a boat and I usually differentiate between two people in life. So one of them, um, so the boat is literally in the middle of the sea. Okay. So you have, you have a, a small boat and uh, it's literally on the sea and uh, there's no land. They cannot even see the land. And one of them is saying, Oh my God, what's going on? What if water comes in? What if the sharks eat us? You know, what if, what if, you know, what if we turn over? I can't swim. What's going to happen? Okay. So the other, the, the first one is constantly complaining. The other one is, you know, he, he took the paddle and he started paddling and, you know, he's thinking, come on, man, just start paddling. Don't, don't talk too much. Don't, you know, everybody can be negative in any, in any situation, but take the paddle and start paddling. So there, there are two people in life and in sales as well. The one that says we can't do it. All right. And the other one that says, you know, um, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to even talk about something that we can't do, but we need to talk the things about the things that we can do. So stop talking and and start paddling. So I believe in life we can also differentiate 
between these two um, uh, part of people. So I believe that uh, sales, before we start selling to people, we need to understand the power of now. We need to understand that whatever we do, we're selling. We need to understand what we have to have positive energy and we need to be motivated to sell. Okay. So the thing about me is I'm constantly motivated. And you know, when they ask me about how do I sustain my motivation, uh, I really can't explain. I have a very, you know, bad or either good technique to do so. I just imagine at one point of my life that um, somebody gives me a call, a stranger gives me a call and says, you know, Kemal, um, we have bad news. You lost your entire family in a flood or you lost your entire family in fire. So these things in life and this kind of sentence where this mindset, you know, everybody has different type of motivation, but this mindset where um, the idea of losing the people I love and care about keep me constantly motivated. Keep me, you know, the first thing I do in the morning is, you know, I wake up, I look at my kids, I look at my wife, I call my mother. Um, I'm very grateful and happy to have them. And this keeps me motivated in work, in life, and everywhere I go. So I'm constantly motivated. Motivation is the key to success, not only in life, but also in sales. If you're not motivated to sell anything, you won't sell anything. So basically imagine a guy going somewhere and go, hey, uh, you know, uh, you wanna buy this? And the other guy say, well, why should I buy that? It doesn't really matter, just, you know. Would you buy it? Of course not. So motivation and motivation to sell is crucial. And the thing about the ad don't believe it at all. They say the number one thing that motivates salespeople is money. And the, the number two thing that motivates salespeople is um, the, the, the uh, neglectance of money. So not to have money on itself. So I, I, I don't believe in both of them. Um, I believe that selling is a skill and it's a passion and it's something that we live. That of course, money is a side effect. I don't believe it's the number one motivation. Um, could be for some people, um, I'm aware of it, but I don't go in there. So the, the thing about motivation is, number one, we have to be certain of the uncertain, okay? So whatever happens to you in life, you can say, oh, what if, you know, um, uh, first I have to, uh, okay, let me give you an example. I met a very young lad just a couple of days ago and he says he wants to get married. Okay. Um, and I asked him why he says, you know, well, he loves his uh, girlfriend. He wants to get married. And um, I asked him, why don't you get married? And he says, okay, well, you know, I first need to find a job. Uh, afterwards, I need to buy a car. Then I need to buy a house. Then I need to buy this. Then I need to do that. Then I need to get permission from her parents, my parents, you know, whatever. So I said, <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's, he's a traditional kind of guy. I said, okay, cool. Um, but why don't you do it now? I said, well, you know, I don't have a job. I said, okay, you know, but it, I, I got married when I was 20 years old. Um, I, I, I don't neglect the thing. It's just something that I love. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love my family. But the thing about uh, motivation is if you have the right kind of motivation, you can do anything you want. The right kind of motivation pushes you to achieve something that you never thought you could achieve. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story about how I opened my company, but I'm gonna finish this slide first. So you can never be certain of anything. You know, you got a job, tomorrow you lose a job. You got a car, you have a car accident, you lose, you know, you lose the car. So you can never be certain in life. Whatever you do in life, you gotta take a hint and maybe sometimes take a leap of faith. And you know, this is life. This is the motivation that I live in. Um, the number two things that may, the number two is actually maybe even harder than number one. And number two is how to sustain motivation. Now, this is much harder than actually holding motivation. Why? Because motivation isn't a, a you know, a straight line, an upward slope, and, you know, you're constantly motivated. It, it's like this, you know, you, you, you fall, you grow up, you then fall again, and then you're up again, and then you fall again, and then you're up again. And I love that movie quote from Sylvester Stallone in, I, I think it was um, Rocky, Rocky IV, Rocky V, where he said, it's not, it's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can you, you get hit and keep moving forward. So this is the thing about motivation. It's not and don't, anticipate and don't think it's going to hold you to the you know end of life
it's constantly going to fall and grow and fall and grow. And this is life, the good and the bad. All right. So I remember um, when I just started my company five years ago. Oh, such crazy time. So basically uh, what happened was I was the head of marketing um, at a university and I wanted to open a company and, you know, I had these bad experience before because I opened two companies when I was um, uh, uh, 20 and uh, 23 years old. And the first company failed after six months. Hurrah. And the other company uh, is still alive, um, but I sold it for peanuts. So, <laughs> so the third company that, that I wanted to open, I was thinking about what I did wrong in the first, first two cases. And the thing is, I always had a backup. Okay. When you have backup, when you have something waiting for you, you never really take a leap of faith. You never really do the, do the final jump that you wish to do. So, you know, I, I, I already started doing, you know, motivational pickups and uh, marketing. And, you know, I had a list of people in my CRM that I wanted to contact. And, you know, when I created this list of CRM people, I was saying, okay, cool. This is a list that I'm going to call and I'm going to sell my service to. And everything is going to be just blended. Yeah, it didn't go that way. Um, I opened up, I left my job, opened up a company, opened up an office. And I, for seven days, I called 56 people and I had 32 meetings. Nothing. I didn't sell nothing. It's crazy. Second week, I called 100 people and had 30 meetings, nothing. The third week, I just stood there. I sat in my chair. I looked in, you know, just a blank wall, and I didn't know what to do. Now, this kind of motivation, when you have kids, when you have a family waiting for you, it kind of, you know, you can, it either creates you, builds you, or it breaks you, okay? And for somebody who's used to selling, uh, the first thing you'll get used to is a big fat no. Okay, this is the first thing you get used to, a big fat no. Okay, so you call once, they said no. You call twice, they said no. They go three times, they said no. So, you know, you gotta give a fourth or fifth call. So, in everything, as in sales, you gotta be motivated. Further on, um, everything in life, and including sales, is based on the Pareto Principle. So you 80% of what you do brings 20% of results. Sales, uh, the good thing about sales is it's a very strict slope. You can, you can find, you know, uh, examples everywhere. You can teach yourself. There's literally a thousands and thousand YouTube material, online materials. You can literally stay at home and learn sales. The technical way, the theoretical way, the thing about sales is that you got to experience it, experience it. But with, like anything in life, you have the Pareto principle. 80% of what you do brings 20% of results. So you got to be prepared for either success or failure. Um, sales comes a lot to a couple of points. And one of the key points is you got to be prepared. You got to fill in the pipeline. You got to know your material. You got to have a CRM. You got to have clients, that, potential clients, leads, prospects that you can call. And when you do that, you want to have a lot of time before you have to jump on and give a good sales pitch to get the client on board. Because clients, you know, a potential client, especially if you don't have a good branding, good marketing base, um, they're not really sure what to expect. But you can definitely be sure that to expect to know. But what salespeople usually forget is, and this is the number thing, and it's, it's, it's incredible how much I see this every day. Last year, we had a big conference, um, 50, no, 100, 120 companies attended. Um, and the, I asked them, okay, how many of you actually had a sales training and what is the first thing you learned? Uh, okay, step aside the thing that most of them have very, very vague knowledge of sales and how to do it. But the other thing is, the first thing they start talking about is the product. What usually salespeople forget is the product isn't the first thing people see, isn't the first thing you get when you see a salesperson. People don't buy product. People don't buy Apple because it's you know it's, it's, they buy it for 
double the price because it's you know very high end of course it is but because of the feeling of having an apple watch or an apple phone or whatever an iphone in their hands and about uh, the the energy that this phone gives them so what people sales people usually forget about sales is you don't you don't advertise product or the brand or what the advantages are you know between a, an iphone or a samsung and any, anything else what they advertise is the salesperson the first thing um, that any buyer potential buyer or prospect will recognize before you enter before you pick up the phone is your energy yourself your smile your looks how you behave how what you do so the first thing you have to start selling as said before you have to start selling yourself this is the number one thing in sales prepare yourself the Pareto principle so prepare yourself 80 percent get your knowledge on board get knowledge of your product get knowledge of your client and prepare yourself to start selling i literally believe that anybody can be a good sales person anyone but first they have to prepare themselves and they have to get the right kind of knowledge and the right kind of techniques on board to start selling. So before everybody starts selling and talks about the product, you have to know that you are the number one product. So the number two thing about sales is you gotta be in charge. You gotta be in charge of the environment. Um, I love uh, Dr. House for those of you who watch the show. Um, he's a, he's a kind of, First, I had a mentor in my life that's very close to him. I hate the guy, but he learned me a lot. You know, he taught me a lot. I hate him. I have to say that again on camera. But you know, he taught me a lot, and we're very good friends now. Still hate him, though. But anyways, we're good friends. So, um, so th th he taught me one thing. Um, Dr. Howe said, time changes everything. That's what people say. It's not true. Doing things changes everything. So when the corona started, what happened to me and with most of the companies on board was um what are we going to do it was a big slap in the face for most people and you know for entrepreneurs such as myself that have a couple of companies and trying to you know all of these companies are startups or companies that just um pushed from the startup phase uh the, the first thing that you know happens to you is oh my god okay the first thing when the corona crisis started when you know there was a lockdown and a lot of companies closed down and then the government says okay nobody can move and then i had 10 contracts and nine of those contracts uh clients called me and said you know kemal um we love what you do but uh, we have to cancel the contracts okay now imagine that first thing for one day for 24 hours i literally froze uh you know people thought i was a dead plant i was just you know walking by i was in this kind of mode where you know i didn't want to talk with anybody i was thinking trying to evaluate what's going on of course you know it's it's like you're in a ring you're fighting boxing with somebody and somebody hits you you fall down and you're like oh my god where am i so that was what, what happened to me but where does success come in where does sales come in from the notion of i am in charge you can't even imagine how many people in companies, in corporate communications, in sales, when you ask them, why don't you sell? They don't know the answer. When you ask them how many clients, or potential clients or CRM clients that you forgot, visited or called in the last 10, 15 months, 30 days, say none. So the first thing in life and in sales that you have to do is you have to take charge. You are in charge of the moment. You are in charge of the sales process. You are in charge of the client. But nothing will happen in sales if you don't knock on the door, if you don't pick up the phone, if you don't send the email. Nothing will happen. Okay, so the first thing you do is um, you have to take charge and you have to stop, start doing things, okay? Now, you already, now I'm gonna jump through the sales process and um, um, the first thing that you're gonna do when you, you know, open the door to someone or you have a phone call or you have a Zoom meeting, conference call with a potential client or anything you wanna sell basically is you, you, they have to uh, understand you, 
and you have to get their attention. Now, the attention span is basically like the goldfish, three second uh, attention span. So you have to tell them something interesting. It can either be data or it can be a cute and well done, well told story. Okay. Um, now, I usually, I started my last conference with a different story about how I, you know, almost died two years ago. I have a lot of these unfortunate stories, but I'm very, you know, grateful that I do have them. But <laughs> no, literally, I have this, I had this issue um, two years ago. But anyways, I'm not going to go into there. But, you know, what they did, what people remembered after, after the conference was um, that story. And, you know, because they had to fill out the questionnaire about what they recalled from the conference. And. 80% of them told them that story. Nobody recalled about the key points of my story, of the, of, of the conference, of the presentation. So when you go out there, you have to tell stories. Storytelling is a special technique that requires um, a first experience, um, empathy, a lot of empathy, and uh, understanding the moment. Again, we come to preparation. The first thing about sales pitch and delivering a strong killer sales pitch and delivering and creating a story is you got to hook them in. You got to hook them in. How do you hook them in? What are the desires? What are the needs? What are the wants? What is the emotion of a potential client? Hook them in. This is step one. It's like a fish. Okay. If you just pull the hook in without any food on top, the fish is not going to bite. Okay. So understanding what is the... The, the need of the client is the number one thing, okay? And you have to understand the audience. You have to start with the why. What we did at the COVID-19 situation is um, we understood that the global pandemic is gonna create an entire revolution of digital buying and advertising. So we closed all um, old school, traditional kind of advertising and we pushed to web shops, um, online platforms. And this is what my company does basically. I have a, um, a full service ad agency. So we did, you know, we pushed all our services to that. And I told all my people, look, call all our clients, ask them, how are they? Are they healthy? Are they safe? And the second thing you're going to do is tell them that we are delivering for a very good price for record time, web shops, digital marketing services, Google ads, social media, anything regarding to digital that will help them, their business survive. So literally all of my people were like, hey, hello, how are you? Hey, Mark, what's going on? Yeah, look, what we're going to do is, Mark, we're going to help your company survive. Oh my God, how are we going to do it? Because we know that most of these companies are very traditional. They, you know, they have these big stores, big shops. Um, they sell very, you know, equipment that, that's on, on site. They never did this kind of business before. So this is what we did. When the COVID-19 happened, we pushed 90% um, uh, of our uh, focus on digital products. And we literally had at that point 80% of sales in, in web shops, literally. So it really, really, we killed it when the COVID-19 situation happened. So when you start delivering a pitch, you have to understand, uh, we have to talk about the change that is happening in the world. Um, a different kind of pitch could be subscription level. Um, the entire globe is literally transforming to a sub 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 uh, subscription level base, selling and buying. So um, you start with something that is a global event. There's nothing more global than the COVID-19 at this point. So we use this as the hook. Second thing is, you got to understand that um, all clients are different, all audience is different. Not everybody behaves the same, um, especially not people are not used to change. So we have to understand the second thing. The third thing you have to understand is um, the audience only cares about themselves. People, they only care about themselves. Clients, yes, it's a shocker, they care about themselves. So basically, you have to understand what they want. You have to understand how they behave, what, what, where it hurts to them. So, so here's, here's SpongeBob saying, I don't need air, but you know, God, give me, give me some, you know, give me water. So basically, um, or he won't survive. So you can't start selling before knowing the problem. Okay. So what we have an issue with sales agents everywhere I go, wherever I train them is, okay, what does the client need? Wherever they go, they sell the same kind of product in the same kind of way. And this is a mistake. A perfect sales pitch, a killer sales pitch, you need to know where it hurts. 
Okay, so guys, everybody has a problem. Become the solution. Remember when at, at the start of the presentation, I said one point and it was everybody hates us, you know, like salespeople. The second kind of thing I want to say is um, we're the best people in the world. Salespeople are the best, you know, look, Mother Teresa, thank you. Mahatma Gandhi, thank you. But salespeople, we solve problems. Okay, you need a phone, can't call anybody, I'll give you a phone. I'll, you know, I'm going to sell it to you. Okay, I'm going to save your business. I'm going to buy you a car. Why would you walk? I mean, at the end of the day. So basically, we solve problems. So if, if there are out of these 20 people that are in the room, uh, people that are salespeople, thank you. You're a blessing to the world. Okay, further on. Um, when you, you, know, you, you talk about the global event, this is step one. COVID-19 is happening. You are telling them, you are showing them, you're listening to them. You know where it hurts. You know how to talk to them. And then you tell them, you know what? It could get worse. It could get worse. You know, COVID-19 situation is going on for an, uh, a year at least. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about, if you have these kind of balancing in your mind, why would you buy from us? Imagine what would happen in a year if you don't buy now, okay? When we start selling Instagram, um, social media services, people are telling, why would we use Instagram? All the kids are on Instagram. Yeah, but in five years, those kids will be your buyers or potential buyers if we start. When? Not now, but yesterday. So basically, you tell them, um, after you show them the problem, after you, you know where it hurts, and, and they say it in their own um, uh, words, then you tell them, yeah, well, with my understanding, it could get worse. The impact the problem has, and it could get worse, you're getting closer to the solution. You're telling them the solution. You're getting closer to where they are. Number four, information. You have to, every cool, uh, every good sales pitch, every killer sales pitch, has to have the right data behind it. And I love this cup. It says, data analysts, I try to make things idiot-proof, but they keep making better idiots. So basically, um, we, have to, we have to tell them the data, the information behind it. When, you know, imagine how strong an impact something has when you say 23% um, of companies closed in the first four months of COVID-19. This kind of data, especially when you give them numbers, this kind of data provides them with the realistic view that they need to do something, that they need to change something in, in order to survive. And the survivalist instinct is the hardest and biggest one to come by. Okay, then you, you come with the, the, you know, you come as a savior, there's a solution to everything. So you basically talk about the value proposition, what your solution tells them and what your solution brings to the table. So a web shop, done, web shop done from scratch in about 15 days with all available filters, one month maintenance complimentary from us. This is what we bring to you. And guess what? You can sell from home starting today. So the end result of your prospect and what they desire is specific period of time and you have to remove objections. So of course, everybody will tell you no. Everybody tells you no, but you got to be patient and you got to understand. And number six, and this is, I can't emphasize this enough, um, in sales, like in everything in life, value, 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 okay? So where does the value come in? What is the value that you bring and that your competition doesn't bring in, okay? So as, as you can see in the picture, um, there's competition, there's you, and there's the prospect. Now, the value parity is something that you bring on the table together with the client. Okay, this is something uh, with the, the competition that you, that you have, but the value wedge is something that you have different from the competition. Now, in order to understand that regarding your product or services, you gotta put three, three things on paper. You gotta know what your value of the, the product or the service is. Is it money, price? Is it quality? Okay, is it time? I believe that in today's world, time is, the number one value, I believe that people will uh, buy and give more money to quality if presented right, okay? So you got to know what your difference and what your uh, specifics are. The number one value of McDonald's is not the quality of the food. The number one value of McDonald's and one why, why they, you know, became a global brand and, you know, global multinational uh, company 
is basically the deliverance, how fast they deliver. It's instant. It's instant. It's fast food. Okay. So this is the value for money. What is the value for money that your client gets? This is, if you have all these six points, then you have a strong, uh, strong sales pitch. You can, you can structure your sales pitch. When you do that, you should put yourself in your client's shoes. I hate when salespeople tell me, oh, you know, the clients are too, um, uh, you know, they're asking for too much. They don't understand us. It's not theirs to understand you. It's used for you to understand them. They are the clients. They are the heads, the directors, the money makers, the money givers. The client is number one. So you, the second thing and same with regarding the, the mindset is you should put yourself in the client's shoes. Why should they care about you? Why should they care about your service? Why should they care about your product? There are three things that you have to answer yourself when it comes to, to, to this part. What is important to the client and why is it important to the client? Okay. And how you're going to present this significance to the potential buyer. Okay. Whenever you're delivering a killer sales pitch, you got to know that you, you start off with your point or something interesting. Keep it unique. Don't bury your message or leave it to the end and don't go too far. When you go too far with your sales pitch, um, and you know, you know this term about the elevator, sa elevator sales pitch, you have two minutes to present what you want, it's because the span of a human being is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. The American Marketing Association, um, three years ago, they published an article saying that the um, uh, attention span of, 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 of a regular customer or a buyer or somebody that sees an ad goes somewhere around seven, and 10 seconds. A year ago, they published a second article, it goes for two to three seconds. Literally, the attention span just cut down in half. So what we see today is we gotta be fast, we gotta be quick, we gotta hook them fast, we gotta solve them in, and we gotta push them to buy as soon as possible. Now, objections. Every sales, every meeting, every conference, every conversation, has certain objections, okay? Financial, will I get the ROI? Okay, yeah, of course, web shop will give you a 22% lift in return of investment. You'll get sales faster, you turn your investment very fast, and you get, you get sales coming in, and you don't have to open anything, you don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to physically be anywhere aside from your home. Product has a risk, every product has a risk. Outline the features your product or services has in quality and show them the results. Uh, data, information, and numbers give you a very good starting point. Competitors risk, you know, somebody could tell you, okay, why does um, uh, we have the same kind of services with the other company? Now, I usually don't talk about other companies. Um, I like to dominate the market. I either jump across them or, you know, eat them or just go around. It's because, not, not because I don't value my competitors, it's just I don't like to give them value. I don't like to give them value. Okay, um, I respect them. I just don't think it's necessary for me to mention that I'm better than anybody else. Now, this is a good, good, good starting line if you, you know, if you believe that this is a strong point for you. Virgin Airlines does this. Um, they don't even respond to their high prices. It's just the way it is. Um, uh, Apple does this. Uh, many other big companies, large companies does this, do this. So basically, it's upon you to understand the market and know your audience. Compatibility, does this suit my business or myself? This is one of the objections that you can get. Uh, get. Emphasize a minimal, if any, impact on your prospect business because the risk they can have by using your product is very minimum, but the value you give, the added value you give as your product or services is high, it's big, okay? And one more thing that I didn't put in the slide and that you have to write it down and very important about selling is when we're talking about value and we're talking about sales pitch is um, undervalue, uh, uh, undersell over value. Okay, undersell over value. You know, when um, I had this when I was, when I was a young guy, I'm, I, hopefully I'm still am. People were talking about, you know, um, uh, you know, being with a partner and stuff like that. And whenever my, my friend used to talk me up, I used to lose the girl for some reason. 
they say you know, he's a good guy, he's funny, he talks well, whatever. So when I get there, she already has a high expectancy rate from me, okay? So when I get there, I, I'm, I'm just stuffed, I'm lost, okay? And she says, you're not the guy they, they told me you are. I said, yeah, well, you're right. So what I found out by dating very small amount of um, um, uh, girls in my time, um, I found out that the best thing to do is uh, undersell and overvalue. Tell them your product is okay. It will serve them business, serve their business. Don't tell them we're the best product in the world. We're, we have the best service in the world because you don't. Competitors are high. They're working all the time. So good sales pitch is also about getting your clients back and getting feedback from the client. Now, when you have all this sold, when we have the structure, then you have to be dedicated. And this is where the journey of transformation becomes, okay? Be dedicated to selling. Um, the statistics say that one out of five follow-ups bring sales, okay? So you're doing a sales pitch, all right? You're doing a sales pitch um, through cold calling and you're saying, Hi, this is Kamal. How are you doing? Um, I'm calling from uh, Uptrend Marketing Agency. We're looking into a new website from your end and say, I'm not, we're not interested. Okay, but yeah, can you give me, no, 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 we, we're busy. Okay. okay. Second time I do the same thing. Third time I do the same thing. Fourth time they say they don't want to talk to me. They block my number. I call from the, another phone and they say, okay, yeah, we're going to buy. So you got to be dedicated and you're going to be um, very, very uh, um, um, aware of what's going on and you have to be constant. And this is where the big bang happens. The big bang is not about um, uh, the process of selling. This is just a way to get to your crucial goal that is to sign the contract or to sell the product or to sell the service. Okay. One of the biggest issues in sales pitching that I see in, biggest com in the biggest companies is they do everything right apart from getting the job done. <laughs> they do everything by the book. They, you know, they send the email, they pick up the phone, but they never finish the sales. Okay. So the big bang is where business happens. It's where you sell your car, your watch, your service, whatever you're selling, this is where you sell it. And this is a very, it's like, it's like playing a game of soccer. Okay. You get, you get the ball um, on the right side, you come to the goal, and then you just say, you know, you do everything right, you do, do the pass right, everything, okay? And then it comes to Podolsky and he says, yeah, no, no, I'm not very interested, you know? So basically he just turns around and gets the ball back. So th this is what, and it's like I'm talking about the Bosnian national team. Anyways, um, <laughs> we do everything right except score the goal. Um, I don't know how many of you remember uh, a, a movie, it's, I think it was in the 90s, Glenn Barry, Glenn Ross, and there's a movie scene over there, it's iconic, and I, please, you know, if, if you like sales, watch the movie, it's an amazing movie. So, mm, I get, you know, the, the main actor, he gets very, very angry, and he starts talking about selling, and he writes down ABC of selling, always be closing, A, always be, B, C, closing, always be closing. You're not, you know, they're not bad leads, you're just, they're not cold leads, it's just you're not doing it right, okay? Now, if I may ask you at this point, what changed in the market, okay? What changed? Is it still ABC like it was in the 90s? How do you see a salesperson today? We don't have much time, so I'm gonna respond. A salesperson today, they're not pushing to sell at all costs. This was a salesperson in the 90s. Today, we have this. Instead of ABC always be uh, closing, it was old school. Today, the new guy says, always be helping. Okay, so let me give you an example. I was buying a suit just the other day. Okay, so I go into a store and this lady, she, she, you know, she's not even, she, she, come up, she came up to me and she says, um, yeah, hello, sir. How are you? Can I offer you something? So I'm looking for a, a, a suit. She says, okay, let me show you this suit, that suit, this, you know, kind of shoes, that kind of tie. And she pushed all this in front of me. And I said, oh my God, okay, wait, um, look, I don't need 10 types of sh suits. Okay. So no, no, but this is high quality. It's on discount. It's this and that. I just ran out of the store. I literally ran out of the store. What I did was I went to the different store to see like, I don't know, what was it me or, or something else? But I ran to a different store 
and there was a very kind, nice lady over there. She's beautiful. She's, you know, giving me a big smile. Um, I looked at where my wife was. She was, I'm just joking. Um, so I went inside and um, uh, the first thing I went inside and I said, hello, how are She said, hello, sir. How may I help you? I said, okay, um, I need to buy a suit. And this is what she said. For what occasion? Okay. So I said, um, well, uh, I have these conferences, so I don't need a very stiff kind of suit. I need something that, that is kind of um, punctual that then I can literally move around. Oh, we have a very nice suit. Can you try this on? Okay. So I tried the suit on. It, it looks very good. Um, and I wanted to buy it. And she says, um, I don't think that suit is right for you. Okay. I, I don't believe that the colors are right. Um, it was black. Um, she said, maybe, maybe try something different, maybe something blue or dark blue, etc. So I tried a different suit. She gave me a different suit. It was very nice, beautiful suit. And I tried it on and I came up and said, how do I look like? She said, brilliant. But can I suggest something? But if you don't mind, uh, what about a tie? I said, I have a lot of ties. But yeah, could you, could you maybe see this tie? Do you like it? Um, if it's for an occasion of giving a speech, maybe it's good based on the, on the suit. Believe me, guys. By the end of the day, I not only bought a suit, I bought a tie, I bought shoes. I went crazy, okay? So what this lady did was she didn't push the product, okay? This is what changed. The customer became smarter. They're not looking for um, uh, sales that is in the 90s that somebody's pushing you the product. Now, before somebody buys a product, the first thing they go is they type online, they look at feedback, they go on YouTube, they say, okay, give me, uh, what, what are the, what, what does this guy say? Ah, uh -huh, okay, this guy gave them a four, this guy, okay, a three, I'm not gonna buy this, I'm gonna go somewhere else. So they look at feedback, they look at, you know, the, feed, the customer became more aware, okay? So this is what basically happened. Product focused, customer focused, linear, generic, customer journey, fluid customer journey, strategy, interrupt, pitch, close. I have a friend of mine, I have to say this, uh, I love him to be very honest, but you know, the guy gets on my nerves. He's a big, very successful salesman here in Sarajevo and he sells everything, literally everything, whatever you need. So he started up with a shoe company just the other day and we were sitting down for a cup of coffee early in the morning and he was telling me like, oh, you need to buy new shoes. You know, why? So you need to buy, we have this, you know, he's showing me on the phone. He's like, come to the store. Look, I'm going to give you a good rate. I'm going to do this. And the thing about him is he pushes you to buy the product that you don't even want. Okay. So when you go back home, you're, you're very angry. You're not satisfied. Okay. So this classic, the best kind of sales pitch today that you can give is the one that helps the client solve the problem. Okay. So this is crucial. Now, when you're pitching, when you're pitching, don't compete, dominate, okay? Probably when you're pitching, you have to understand that before you came to, in, to this client, a lot of other companies, people also pitch to the client themselves. So you got to be aware how you behave, what you do, look them in the eyes and dominate with full self-awareness. And this is very, very important. I don't like competition. I don't like competition anywhere. I think it's good for the economy. I hate it when it comes to my end, when somebody says, ah, competition makes you better. Yeah, cool, I hate it. Okay, so basically, I like to dominate the market. I like to dominate my clients and I like to dominate my pitch. So when you're delivering a sales pitch, an important sales pitch, and you, when, you, when you wanna prove a point, you have to ask yourself, Constantly, three main questions. One, who is the audience? Male, female, uh, kid, kids or adults or teens. Um, what kind of geography, demography are they uh, coming from? Um, this is very important. What is their problem? What are the needs, the wants? Uh, where does it hurt? Remember we talked about delivering a pitch so first, to give them a, um, a bigger view of, of, of the issue COVID-19 is going on, it's going to get worse. It's not stopping here. It's going to get worse. You tell them it's going to hurt if they don't buy your solution. And then you don't say buy it, but you're helping them. Okay. So that's why I believe that salespeople are very, very important. And that's why I value salespeople very much. But sometimes to sell and to deliver a sales pitch is also to jump from a high cliff. 
It's taking a leap of faith. To sell, you gotta have passion. It's not only about skills, it's about passion. They have to buy, they have to eat your energy. And to be a good salesperson and to deliver a killer sales pitch, you gotta be you versus you. You gotta be yourself, a strong winner mindset, and you have to believe in yourself. And you have to look at yourself and train yourself to be ready to pitch. Thank you very much. Stay positively negative in the COVID-19 crisis. And I'm going to finish with a quote, a salesman minus enthusiasm is just another clerk by Harry Banks. Thank you very much. I believe I was, yes, right on point. I know you have a meeting. God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay, Q&A. Thank you very much, Kemo. Yes, we have we have a couple of members from 551 who started meeting at seven. So uh, we, we will we will see some of them uh, leaving pretty early. But uh, yeah, thank you. If you have time for Q and A, uh, this is this is very nice. So if if uh, some one of you has a question for our speaker, please open your microphones. We're we're just we are just a crowd off let me see 15 people so this should not be a problem with the mics um I'd be yeah happy. any any questions if there are any questions i'm fully open shoot <laughs> came out one one question that that came to my mind you 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 said the customers are getting smarter and, and i have to say this is a bold statement so I, I, I think I know what you mean. So customers, of course, have more, more ways to, to, to have information, to yeah. compare things. Yeah. It is much easier to figure out what the differences are and get and, and to get already opinions and, 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 uh, and, and, and um, <sighs> some statements and, and things to watch out for before they approach the salesperson. Yeah. So or, or the salesperson approaches yeah. them. Um, but uh, I, I, I had one of my customers once said that, that the people are, are, are getting more and more confused in front and, and, and behind the sales desk. So it, it seems in a world where we, where we are selling more services and things are getting more complex, it, it, it needs more a relation than just someone who's, who's giving you something in your hands. And, and, and I think this is, this, this is, this is the world where, where, where we are living. And I understand, I understand the question, uh, Gunther, thank you very much. So basically what I said by the customer is getting smarter is uh, before it was an A to B street of communication, kind of line of communication. Yeah. Um, uh, and it was a very straightforward customer journey. Today it's changed mm -hmm. uh, with the rise of social media, Literally, the cust any any buyer will first Google um, a product a dozen times before buying it. Um, yeah. yeah, they will talk to people. They can literally talk to anybody from here to, to the U.S. So basically, um, uh, the salesperson, as you said, should be more focused on relationships instead of the product. Mm -hmm. One thing I forgot to say, and I don't know how, is the perfect sales pitch, the killer sales pitch that, that doesn't only include selling the product, but actually getting feedback from the client in a couple of months if they're satisfied so the perfect and satisfied customer yeah. you can never have a satisfied customer today but a satisfied customer by the product or service is a gift to the salesman that that that, that is basically what, what i mean mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. fully agree <clears throat> and uh, Kemal, how, how, what is, what is your, what is your, your trick to sustain motivation? So was it, was it, was it a story to imagine the worst case and then to be happy that the worst case is not happening or I, I talked with did I get that right in short? When, when I, when I talk with people, um, during my one-on-one, -on -one, um, sessions with either, um, people from the corporate world or, um, I, I hate to say, you know, when people tell me I'm a life coach, I hate that word. It's just that um, sustaining motivation isn't easy. It's easier to get motivation. You know, you can literally um, go through a Tony Robbins session mm -hmm. online and, and, and be motivated. But to, to sustain that motivation is difficult. Um, everybody is different. And we have to understand that. The, the customer is different. 
So to, in order to sustain motivation, one of the key points everybody has to uh, understand is to be aware of what they love most in their life. Uh, like mm-hmm. and what they want most in their life. Most people have this issue about you know waiting for something that will happen in their life while they have everything on set. Um, yeah. This is what social media brought. This is what the consumerism brought to us. So motivation is a never-ending process. It's a good and bad a part of life. So it's, it never ends. You know, whenever I you know, when when I talk with young people, especially. You know, one day they're you're full of high energy. I don't know, maybe because of something they took. But the, the other day they're, they're just, you know, you can see they're depressed and it goes on for 10 days and it's up and down. So because they, they wait for something, they go through social media, they scroll social media. And we live in this, we call, I call them selfie sapiens because we live in this world where, where they see another uh, person and human being relaxing somewhere on, on a beach. And they say, okay, why well, I'm, I'm not doing that? And everybody's selling the lifestyle that most of them don't have. And this is where motivation kicks in. Motivation starts with the why. Why am I doing something? Okay. Um, People work for 15 years in a corporate company as a salesperson and never, um, never succeeds in getting a pay raise or a bigger spot in their company and of course they're not satisfied and you ask them why are they doing why are they working in that company they, they don't know how to answer it and this is the toughest question we have to ask ourselves yeah I'm not, for me i'm motivated to work 24 7 um 12 months in a year because um uh, you know because i love my job and i know why i'm doing it it's not money it's not cash it's not finances it's my passion to Process. deliver something else. So this is what motivates me. So on one side, the worst case scenario to lose everything I love in my life. The other thing is I know why I'm doing it. I want to create a legacy. And this is the important thing regarding myself. So, but mm-hmm. everybody has a different point of view and everybody, you know, somebody's doing it. People believe that buying a great new Mercedes Benz will bring them happiness. Most of the time they, it, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? If there are no other questions, I would just like to ask everyone to turn their cameras on and put on a big smile so oh, I can okay. screen everything. <laughs> <I> follow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes, thank you very much. And if, if you have any feedback from my end, if it's good feedback, I'm going to read it. If it's bad feedback, I, I'm just going to ignore it. So, <laughs> I'm just, just joking. Um, thank you very much. I actually much. have one uh, question. Oh, Kemal. Sorry, this is Marco. Hi. Okay. A compliments for your very good presentation. It took me 60 minutes, not one, not one minute. I was, uh, I was not listening, which is good. Um, once you have understood, uh, I'm selling services. Okay. I'm a voice trainer. Okay. Uh, once you have understood who is going to be your clients and for whom you want to work and why, and the why is central. I totally agree on that with you. Uh, in my case, it's going to be mostly executives, so CEOs and that people. Okay. Uh, they want excellence. They want uh, to be the guys that they have it and the others don't. How would you approach uh, this target without being aggressive? Let's put it that way. Uh, that's the first question. The second question is how do you make them aware they have a problem? Uh, you go into a suit store because you need a suit. You go into a shoe shop because you need shoes. You have a problem. You, they sell you shoes uh, and you buy them. Uh, the CEO is very self-confident. He's probably a very good CEO and his company is going well. And then he's holding a speech and you realize, wow, that guy has no idea how to use his voice, his body language whatsoever. That's what I'm training. Yeah. Um, how do I approach him and how do I sell to him the fact that he's going to work with me and this is something very special? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Um, so as far as I understood, you're a voice trainer, but also you also do body language, um, which is, which is great. Um, we have a very similar, uh, field of, of work. Um, the, the thing of the, the thing about selling services, it's, it's different than a product because you can, you can actually show off a product and say, okay, I'm going to sell you this, 
a cup and you can see it and those people that give you money for it that will actually you know hold it in their hands and providing services and especially to ceos that are very confident very successful that um are fully aware of their success that they achieved in life is is very hard so your question is um uh, is how to approach these clients and just to confirm this how to approach these clients without being too aggressive and how to tell them that they're not very good when they're speaking is, is, that, is that right yeah well make them aware of the problem they might have and why they what they could achieve in improving that uh, but not calling them and telling them, listen, I think you have a problem. I may solve it. They're like, Brilliant. they're like, no, I don't. <laughs> Brilliant. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually like that. So the, the thing about the thing about these kind of clients is um, they're 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 very strict in 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 the way they talk and the way they understand things. So um, I believe that the best possible way uh, we have two options. Option A is to give them a a very cold wake up call. Um, and the biggest wake up call is when they provide speeches and when they provide talks and when they have meetings is to get free feedback from the people they, they are in. Um, if, if, if they go on TV, if they're going radio, if they're on social media and somebody records them, you know, giving a speech or talking about certain distinctive issues that, that are very important that people don't understand is then you have to give them a very cold wake up call that's saying, you know, look, you're not getting the results that you should be getting because of very slight things that you need to, to, to um, uh, build upon your, uh, upon your speaking. So, uh, but you don't tell them they're bad. This is the thing that um, you, you can't tell any, anybody that they're doing something bad or that they're not good at something. You know, nobody likes to hear, hear about I, I'm very bad in math, but if somebody told me I'm bad in math, I would be very offended. So, you know, this is the thing. So you have to tell them, you have to show them the advantages of your service. Okay, so you don't call them. Oh, these kind of clients are not uh, for cold calling. They usually have secretaries. What you can do is you can provide complimentary services for one hour, half an hour, uh, consulting on uh, public speaking and body language. Okay, so this is what you can do. You can you can you can subscribe. You can fill up an email, send them an email, saying, "Okay, we're going to provide you an online session, complimentary session for half an hour, where we're going to analyze um, all your management and how they talk, and and we can improve their sales or we can improve their efficiency rate during um, either meetings or calls or um, anything they do in their business." Okay, so this is where you know after you've done the session. You can create a report and it's called, you know this uh, 100%, but you know, a, a diagnostic report where you literally in percentages and in a very short report, the we, we report tell them what, what they do good and what they do bad. Okay, I had a client very similar um, two years ago, it was part of the elections and he believed that he was a very good public speaker. He was terrible. So um, what I did was, I told him that during his public speak, uh, speaking, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give a very short questionnaire to the people in the audience, give their response, and it's gonna be anonymously, so he's not gonna know who and what, said, uh, what they said. Um, he got very, very bad remarks. Um, he was angry, of course, with the people because they were his friends, but at the end of the day, um, he hired me and we worked together for uh, six months. He tremendously improved. Um, so I believe these, these kind of soft ways of approaching, very smart ways of approaching these kinds of clients is very important. Um, so you don't go aggressively. And when you, when you um, um, one, one thing, when you want to show them how good and how quality wise they improved, then um, you put it on the table with a different report saying, okay, we've done for one month uh, voice training so we improved um, this, we improved that by 20%, this by 30%. Okay, let's test it with the audience. And then you let the audience give the final remarks. That is what I believe would be the best possible solution. I hope you're satisfied with the answer. Thank you very much indeed, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the question. Any other questions? Hello, I have a question. Uh, uh, because you mentioned Dominate, don't compete. Yeah. What do you mean with this? Because it's, it's confused me a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
who how who I, I should dominate okay <laughs> i believe i believe that um if we want to succeed in any part of life we have to dominate the moment any moment uh, okay what does that mean that means that we need to be prepared the best as possible we need to be the best as possible on spot okay not with the mindset of let, let this pass or i'm too tired or um uh, let me give you an example um, I have a very small company. We have 13 people on board full time. We have around six people part time, and uh, I'm, I get very tired. So before I enter the, you know, the company itself, I stand in front of the door. I put myself up. I put a big smile on my face, and I enter with as much energy as possible. And they, I have this energy until I go to my office where I just break down. But the thing is. I like to dominate the moment. I like them to see that I'm full of energy, that I'm full of enthusiasm, that when I'm selling to a client, I want them to know that my product is the best possible solution for them. And that I don't care about a different type of product. Okay, so this is dominate, don't compete. People are usually, oh, well, you know, we have a different competition coming from this end. We have a company that sells the same thing. I don't care about other companies. If you want to succeed, and if anybody wants to succeed in building their business, they have to know that they have to take full control of the moment they live in. And this is uh, basically the definition of domination. So it's not about being stiff or hard or loud. It's about controlling the environment as much as possible, 100% if possible. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll be very um, glad if there are any other questions. Okay. 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 Um, uh, Selma, I believe there are no other questions, so I'll just f finish with. Um, it was truly uh, a pleasure, honor, and um, I have I have a short, very short. Um, uh, sales pitch workbook and the presentation that I want to send to all of you, each and one of you individually. So I'm going to ask Selma or uh, Gunta or anybody from, from, from your end to just provide me with the emails and you know give me a couple of days and I will be very glad to stay in touch with you. I'm going to also give you my phone numbers but you, you know through Selma uh, I'll be delighted to um, support, associate or any kind of way that I can be of, of, at your service. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kemal. Thank you for everyone who, who listened tonight. And uh, Selma, you should be, you, you, you see the attendee list in Zoom, in your Zoom account. You, you, you can look it up. Yeah. Right, I was muted. Um, yes. Uh, I, can, I can help you with that if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you need help. I can show you the point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once again, thank you, uh, thank you all for attending this workshop. I hope, I sincerely hope it was beneficial and uh, looking through the, the presentation and also attending myself and being uh, a salesperson myself in the past, um, I, I, I'm convinced that it was beneficial. It just depends on the perspective. Um, Thank you once again for the support. We appreciate it very much since this money is going to be used for the registration of the club. Uh, therefore, uh, it's, it's a huge milestone we are taking today. And um, hope to stay in touch. Uh, add us on LinkedIn, on Facebook or whatever, and see you hopefully at some competition at Toastmasters. Thank you We're looking much. forward for it, Camel. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Such a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a great night. Have a great you. evening. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.